everyone, Pastor Jeremy checking in for our Wednesday midweek devotion. Uh, I'm actually doing this on a Wednesday afternoon. It's been a crazy couple of days. Uh, you've probably saw on Facebook, um, one of our kids said strep and he's doing better and hopefully nobody else is going to get it, but we've just been battling a few other things and I've got kind of this cold that doesn't seem to want to go away. Um, I appreciate your prayers on all that, but we are plugging along. And then tied in with all of that, uh, we had our first NTI snow day at school today. Um, that also complicated church decisions, and, and so we spent a lot of time today talking about that. And so uh, we had made the decision to cancel our Wednesday night activities, mostly because uh, general policy has been if the school cancels, then, then we will cancel that night. Um, the roads were not too bad this afternoon, so it made it a harder decision, but we thought for the sake of clarity and moving forward, um, we would do that, and so hopefully this gave you, if you're watching and you don't usually watch on Wednesday night, maybe this gave you a chance to uh, rest up a little bit. I know there's been some sickness going through uh, during this time. Tonight I want to uh, just spend some time in Matthew chapter 6. This is works out well because there were some passages that I um, was presented in the narrative lectionary as a chance to preach on, and uh, I just had too much to cover, and so I was looking at the readings for uh, today, February 1st, and then yesterday, and um, looked at both of those, and it was something I'd wanted to talk about. And so we're going to talk a little bit about worry. If anybody's ever worried, then this is something for you. Um, but it was a, a troubling passage in many ways when I started uh, to prepare for tonight. I, I wasn't as troubled the more you start thinking about it. There were some questions, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a minute. Um, so tonight it's going to be Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 through 34. I'm doing two days of readings, and it says this. And remember, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. So this is Jesus speaking. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So, uh, this is one of those passages that if we just take it straight, um, kind of read it as it says, Do not worry about your food, about your clothes. Why do you worry about such things? Don't you know that God will take care of you? It can sound like, uh, well, if I'm worrying about anything, that it means that there's something wrong with me. And uh, while we might see an area for growth, um, this doesn't necessarily mean this is what was intended in the passage. But we start thinking about some, some real world situations, and this would have been true in Jesus' time. It says, do not worry about food. Uh, but there are people all around the world, uh, there are people in our own county who are struggling with hunger today. You know, schools canceled, and there may be some children who didn't get a chance to eat because um, they were not um, expecting to be out of school. And so the backpack ministry and some of the things that we typically do uh, wouldn't have happened on a Wednesday. So to talk about a passage like this where it says, do not worry, there are things, and again, maybe, I'm not arguing with, with Scripture, but there are things that my brain says, well, you know, a test result, the doctor, uh, we get nervous about those, right? I think there is some level of uh, worry that is within us for a good reason. There are things that we should be careful about. I, I sometimes worry as a father when my kids are walking down the street and that worry causes me to to maybe make sure they're walking in a safer side and, and watching for cars and, and things like that. But nevertheless, we have this challenge of what do we do with the passage that says, why don't we be worrying about all these things if your Heavenly Father cares about you? And the question is, why do we then see hunger and we see people who need clothes and we need all of these different things? I think what has been most helpful for me in reading this story is to remember the audience that Jesus would have been speaking to. This would have been mostly his followers who had um, 
been able to be self-sufficient in their own ways. They had earned things. They had, whether it was fishing, whether it was being, you know, a tax collector, whatever it was doing, he was speaking to people who had uh, been able to just provide for themselves. Now, all of a sudden, they're learning to live in faith not knowing what the next day will bring, not knowing if that food would be there. And so when we read it in this context, we, we realize that, you know, through the full story of Jesus, well, Jesus obviously cares for the poor. Um, pretty much most of the scripture is take care of the poor, care for those who are outcast, lost, mistreated, whatever it may be. Um, Jesus said, you know, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me is, is how we will know that we're disciples. So like all of those things are true. And so we don't need to panic when we then read Jesus saying, don't worry about these things because obviously God cares about you and he cares about nature. And we think of the lilies of the field and we think about the birds. Perhaps we can just realize that in this particular context, he is talking to his, his disciples. He's speaking to these followers and maybe uh, we can see what would be the heart in that. And so I think it is possible to read the story and realize the places where we need to trust God more. And we need to talk about the worry in our life, but uh, we don't have to just make it a blanket thing because there are people who are rightfully worried about food. And I'll say maybe it's not rightfully worried because if we were all doing our job as believers, maybe hunger would go away. But nevertheless, prior to this section on worry, verse 25, you know, the, the good folks that I think Zondervan put together, my particular uh, New International Version, and they put these headings in here. So like 25 through 34 that I read today is about worry. But the section right before that is, do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up your treasures in heaven where all those bad things don't seem to happen. And so it's this perspective that is shifting because I have never missed a meal, at least because I didn't have one available to me. Maybe I forgot to pack a lunch or something, but but if you, you know, I don't look like somebody who's missed a lot of meals, but I spent a lot of my time worrying about things that I've never had to go without. What am I worried about, you know, the next meal? What's it going to be? You ever sat at a restaurant thinking about your next meal, thinking about clothes that maybe you'd like to have someday, but you don't really need? Have you worried about paying bills when they come due, but you realize you've always been able to pay the bills and things work out? It's just that maybe we have not been satisfied with the, the things that God has given to us. I think it's really important that when God is, Jesus has laid out this, where your treasures in heaven are and the things that are chasing are most important, when you have determined your treasures in heaven, then it becomes easier to worry less and less about the material things. For me, it's not a fear of eating because I don't have enough food. It's because I just always have this fear that someday I'm not going to have enough. And one of the things that happens is in our life when we feel like things are going to be taken from us or people are out to get us or whatever might happen, we start to act in ways that are counter to the kingdom. And so when we read this idea of do not worry about your life and what you will eat or drink, I don't think this is speaking about like actual whether or not you will starve to death. But instead it's what have you been chasing? Because for these folks in our culture, it's all about you have to earn all of these things and you want to show a certain level of success and you want to buy the nicer things and the nicer brands and you want to keep elevating your role. But Jesus is saying, I want you to follow me and to trust that if you follow me, I will take care of you. The birds of the field did not do anything to earn the food that is there. If you're like at our house, we have a bird feeder. They get to eat because I filled up the bird feeder. They didn't ask me for it. They didn't know that it was going to be there. But just within a day or two of the bird feeder, all of a sudden it begins to show up. It says, the pagans run after all these things, but your heavenly father knows you need them. So how do we start to maybe eliminate some of the worry in our life? Well, we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I have found that in the times in my life when I have fully trusted in God's plan, I've had everything that I needed. 
The biggest messes came when maybe I started to chase things I wasn't supposed to chase, when I started to act in ways that I wasn't supposed to act, when I started elevating, well, if only I could have, you know, this particular thing or have this particular position or I only could get this particular role. If I did all that, then I wouldn't need to rely on God. But what God's saying is, if you will follow me, then you will have more than you need. And sometimes that still might mean you're hungry. Sometimes it might mean that you're wearing clothes that have holes in them. But if your ultimate response is, is to being able to see your treasure in heaven, then you're not going to be as concerned about those things. In my case, most of the things that I worry about never seem to happen. How much time in your life have you spent worrying about things that really are outside of your control? And I do want to say, this is always important, that worrying in and of itself can be a, a sign of something deeper that is going on. And so if if we're doubt, doubting uh, excuse me, dealing with depression or you're dealing with, with dark thoughts, you know, I would encourage you to seek somebody that you can talk to and, and to seek counseling. And I know it's a really hard thing to, to, to say or, or, you know, it's not always as easy to do. But I don't want to say, like, don't worry about things. I mean, like, if you're struggling with things, that is a sign that there is a chance to see God's provision and healing. We're not glorifying it. We're not glorifying the hard stances. But it's a chance to say, if I am dealing with this, it might mean that I need help. It might be biological, physiological, it might be medicinal. There may be certain things that you need in order to get there. But I think when it comes to the heart of this, it's this. We say, Lord, I'm going to follow you everywhere you'd ask me to go. But then we start to think, well, not really. Lord, I'll do anything you want. But then you start worrying. But if I give too much, will I have enough? If I... Fill up my calendar so much, will I have enough time to do the things that I want and be able to take up that hobby? If I start to join too many groups, am I going to have people who take advantage of my relationships? I don't know what it is, but oftentimes our worry is a sign of a place where we're not willing to give God full control. And so in reading this passage, again, I don't believe this is a condemnation on the poor. I think that there are things that cause concern within us. Jesus himself was grieved in the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion. Being fully human, there had to have been some concern about worry. But the problem is when worry begins to control our lives and it keeps us from seeking God's kingdom. Sometimes our faith says, I am worried about this, but I'm going to trust God anyways. There's no shortage of things to be concerned about. But each and every day, we have the opportunity to turn our lives over to the one who can do immeasurably more. Scripture says, tomorrow has enough. Today, why worry about tomorrow? Because enough has... I'm having a hard time with that one. Why worry about tomorrow when today has enough to worry about? Are you seeking to be faithful today? Are you looking to see on earth as it is in heaven today? Are you trusting God that when God tells you to go... When God calls you to do, to reach out, whatever it might be that you're willing to say, yes, Lord, I am willing and I am ready to go. Worry is a natural thing, but we can't give in to the worry that plagues us. Trusting God is sometimes scary, but I believe that as we look back on years and years of our life, we will see that steady hand of provision of a God who's been walking alongside of us, who's been preparing us, and who's been encouraging us all along the way. So, I hope that you all are doing well. I say this each week. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday, if not before. Uh, this Sunday is our Upward Sunday. We have two sun or this Saturday, excuse me. This Saturday is Upward Saturday. We have two days that we are working and we still have some positions where we need some help so if you're able to come by for an hour or two or three on uh, on Saturday uh, please reach out to Bill Kahn and he will be able to uh, put you exactly in a place of service and we'll be able to take care of that uh, we will have lots of folks coming into our church building that day and so we want to receive them and give them the best First Baptist welcome that we know how have a great week I hope that you stay warm and dry and healthy uh, wherever you are and I look forward to seeing you again soon.